Hi, this is Hannah, and today we are going to talk about applying for a practicing certificate in the Teaching Council of New Zealand. said on the previous videos practicing certificate is very important because it will be our license to be a registered teacher here in New Zealand before you apply in teaching council for the practicing certificate you need to prepare first the documents needed for it so first and foremost you need to have the NZQA IQA result for your bachelor's degree and it should be level 7 or above and if you, you also have your IQA assessment for your master's degree or doctorate degree you should also include it next is you should have a language proficiency test result like IELTS or PTE in my case I had PTE and the minimum score for PTE is 65 for each module minimum score of 65 for listening reading writing and speaking so before you apply for a practicing certificate you need to gather all the required documents of the teaching council and have it notarized yes you heard it right every document that you will submit in the teaching council should be certified true copy of a notary public what i did is i scanned all the documents make sure that it is colored and clear then i printed it all and have it notarized and then i scanned it again in colored copy and a clear copy again after having it notarized and I saved each file individually as PDF. So here are the list of documents that you need to prepare before applying the Teaching Council Practicing Certificate. First is the POI or the Proof of Identity. You will see a file of it in the website of the Teaching Council. Next is the Bachelor Diploma. Bachelor TOR and Bachelor IQA result. Next is a practicum certificate, master's or doctorate diploma, TOR and IQA result if you have any, but this is only optional. Another is curriculum vitae, and if you are from DepEd, you should prepare your COT, IPCRF summaries reference letter coming from one of your co-teachers or colleagues and appraisal or testimonial coming from your principal or school head you also need to have your prc id certified true copy and all the certificates coming from the prc so there's certificate of passing certificate of good standing and report of rating Next, you also need to provide your PTE result and your NBI clearance. Make sure that it is valid at least six months after your application. So now let's talk about the step-by-step -step procedure and how you can apply your practicing certificate. So the first thing that you need to do is to search for Hapori Matatu Online Community and click the link of hapurimatatu.teachingcouncil.nz then you will see the web page or the site of hapurimatatu online community and you need to click the entering teaching in new zealand this is for the first application for new graduates who graduated here in new zealand and if you are an overseas teacher that does not previously applied to teaching council. So after that, you will have to click create new account. Then a message will pop up 
uh, asking you to confirm if you have an existing ESL account because you should have only one education sector log on they are not allowing us to create another one if we forgot uh, our login details so if you cannot remember your login details you should contact the education service desk for assistance so since i do not have an existing esl account i clicked create a new account so in creating new account you should have a username so make sure that the username is unique um, between 4 to 16 characters and it must contain different cases like uppercase and lowercase and must include a number in it in the password you should have lowercase uppercase letters numbers and symbols so make sure that you will create a very strong password and make sure that you will not forget about your login details to be able to access your account so we also have security questions so if ever you forgotten your uh, access details then here are the security questions that you need to answer so make sure that you will remember the questions and the answers that you have provided here so some some of the samples of um security questions are what was the name of the first company that you worked for what was your father's place of birth and what was your first job after finishing school so after you have finished filling up the security questions you will now have to prove that you're a human by typing in the characters that you see in the pictures make sure that you type according to the case that it is written then after entering the characters you should click on create after clicking create the terms um, of use will be um, presented to you so you should read everything in it to make sure that you understand the terms and conditions of the teaching council after reading the terms and conditions you should click the i accept button now here is the complete registration so we have to provide our email address make sure that you will give them the email address that is accessible to you because this will be used for messages or information coming from the teaching council you also have to provide your given name middle name preferred name if you have one surname and the date of birth also you have to provide your phone number and click submit after clicking submit they will send an email to you so you should click the link here to activate your account after that you should go back to haporimatatu.teachingcouncil.nz and log into your account using your ESL account details. After logging in, you should click first time registration or apply for practicing certificate. So this practicing certificate will be your license to be a registered teacher here in New Zealand. So make sure that before applying, all the requirements needed are already prepared so that you will have a smooth application for your teaching certificate first tab is the introduction okay so you need to provide your personal details your title if you're miss mrs or mr your surname first name if you have been known by any other name you will have to provide your preferred name next you need to provide your gender date of birth, ethnicity, city or town of birth, country of birth, and if you have NZ driver license number, 
you need to provide it but if none leave it blank you also have to update your address so just click on update address and type the details of your address and save it you also need to provide your home phone mobile phone work phone if ever you have one and then you need to have or you need to indicate what is your preferred contact number so either your home phone mobile phone or work phone and you should provide your primary email address this is the email address that you usually use and alternative email address if you have a second email address that you can have or you can access aside from your primary email address next is the current education sector so here you are going to choose the sector you are working in or are intending to work so here i chose the ece because this is where i am intending to work and there's also a question are you currently employed in teaching position in new zealand i answered no because during that time i'm still in the philippines so the poi or the proof of identity should be filled up and um notarized so you need to have it notarized by notary public near your place there's also a question are you currently living overseas or outside of nz and my answer is yes so this is what the proof of identity overseas or poi os form looks like so it asks about your surname first and middle names document name so you have category a and category b so there's a drag down there you should um, present your passport and then um other id so here i presented my passport and my prc id next is identity referee details so i had a person authorized by law of the country to administer an oath for the purpose of judicial proceeding i just filled up full name of the identity referee or the full name of the attorney in the notary public the address of the notary public email address of the attorney and the contact number and they dry sealed on the part of the official stamp and then identity referee signature is the signature of the attorney and the date so here you're going to upload files so i converted it into a pdf file and after uploading click next make sure that the scanned copy is colored and a clear copy next is have you spent 12 months or more in any country other than nz over the last 10 years even if you didn't spend 12 months all in one visit so here if you're spending 12 months or more in other country other than your own country or nz so here i didn't go to any country to work or for work so i just answered no next are you applying under the trans tasman mutual recognition act the answer is no to be employed as a teacher in new zealand you need to be registered and hold a practicing certificate so here you need to answer yes asking do you want a practicing certificate the answer is yes Next is the teaching qualification. This section will collect your details to confirm if you have suitable teaching qualifications to meet the registration requirements that you are satisfactorily trained to teach in New Zealand. Click next. So the question is, did you gain your teaching qualification in New Zealand or overseas? so i answered overseas so you are going to fill in the necessary information for teaching qualifications so here you will type your qualification name or your course 
So you must include your course and your majorship. So for me, I had a Bachelor of Elementary Education, major in Special Education. And then for the institution, you will type the name of your school or your university or college, country, length of course. So here I took a four-year course, so the answer is four. Date completed or expected completion date. You can see the date in your TOR, so you must check it first before filling up this section. And is this an initial teaching education qualification? The answer is yes. Next is your qualification on the New Zealand Qualifications Authority or NZQA list of pre-approved overseas teaching qualifications? The answer is yes. So here you need to provide the qualifications. Make sure that they are certified copy and colored and clear copies. Click upload the files. You should include the PDF file of your bachelor diploma. Make sure it is certified copy, meaning it is a notarized copy. Bachelor diploma, bachelor IQA, and bachelor TOR. The bachelor IQA is the result of your NZQA IQA. So meaning it is the PDF file stating what level are you in the nzqa assessment make sure that all of your files are colored and clear copy click open uploading files and after uploading click next next question is did you complete a supervised teaching practicum as part of this teaching qualification so this is what we call in-campus or off-campus training so click yes you need to provide your in-campus or off-campus certificate so if you do not have one you should request in your universities so this certificate should include where did you had your practicum at what inclusive date it happened how many hours or total number of hours have you done with the signature of the dean and your program head so the answer should be yes and then click next how long was this practicum in years i had my practicum for about two months so i just wrote one because you cannot write zero or anything with decimal point so i just wrote one and what type of institution was this practicum completed in? My answer is school. What age group did you teach during this practicum? So I just had from 6 years old to 10 years old. Would you like to upload documentation relating to the practicum? Yes. So here, you're going to upload your certified copy of practicum certificate make sure it is a colored and clear copy and it is a pdf file after uploading click done and next next question did you complete another supervised practicum as part of this teaching qualification i answered yes again because I will upload my teaching experiences as well. So how long was this practicum in years? I stated two. What type of institution was this practicum completed? I answered school. What age group did you teach during this practicum? From 6 to 10 again. And would you like to upload documentation relating to the practicum? I answered yes. Then click next. I uploaded here my IPCRF summary and the COT or the class observation tool that I have. It is also a colored scanned copy notarized. After uploading, click done and next. So did you completed another supervised teaching practicum as part of this teaching qualification? The answer is no. If you don't have any other certificate to provide, 
you should answer no to proceed to other questions. Do you have another qualification to add? So if you have master's degree and doctorate degree, also assessed by NZQA, you should answer yes. But if you have no other than bachelor degree, then you should answer no. So because I have master's degree, I answered yes. Did you gain your teaching qualification in New Zealand or overseas? My answer again is overseas. So here I am going to fill up the teaching qualification. So the qualification name, your master's course. So I entered Master of Arts in Education together with my majorship. The institution where I graduated, country, length of course. I finished my master's degree in two years, so I just wrote two. Date completed is also stated in the diploma and TOR, so you could you can check that before filling it out. And is this an initial teaching education qualification? The answer is yes. Click next. Is your qualification and the New Zealand Qualifications Authority or NZQA list of pre-approved overseas teaching qualifications? The answer is yes. So here you are going to upload your uh, master's diploma, master's TOR, and the IQA result for your master's degree. After uploading, click done and next. Did you complete a supervised teaching practicum as part of this teaching qualification? So since I have no uh, practicum for my master's degree, I answered no. Thank you. Your qualification details had been added to your application. Do you have another qualification to add? Since I don't have a doctorate degree, I answered no. Next, you are going to answer questions related to your teaching experience. Have you been employed in a teaching position since getting your qualification? The answer is yes. So you should have an experience first before applying for a practicing certificate. So you're going to upload your CV or curriculum vitae that outlines your role as a teacher. You should also upload your COT, IPCRF, reference letter from one of your colleagues or co-teachers, testimonial from your school head or principal, and your certificate of employment all of this should be notarized and scanned, colored, and clear. Next, since completing your teaching qualification, have you completed a planned program of supervised teaching with a mentor teacher? The answer is yes. You should answer yes. Please provide information about any supervised teaching mentoring you've had. What education setting did you complete this program in? I answered primary or elementary school and I uploaded again my COT and IPCRF as a proof that I was supervised by a mentor or a higher positioned teacher. Do you hold a professional status issued or recognized by the professional teaching body? The answer is yes. In our country, it is the PRC. So here, I uploaded my PRC ID together with all the certifications from the PRC. Next is language competency. So here, I selected the language test that I had, which is Pearson Test of English or PTE Academic. So for PTE, a minimum score of 65 in all four modules are required by the teaching council so as a comment i just stated my scores for each modules after that you need to upload the result of your pte so just click upload the file and select the pdf file of your pte result and after uploading there's a question again do you have another language achievement to add so my answer is no, since I only have PTE. Next is declarations. Have you ever been dismissed? 
from a teaching position in any country? My answer is no. Have you ever had teacher registration refused or cancelled in any country? Answer again is no. Do you have any physical or mental health conditions that may affect your ability to carry out teaching role safely and satisfactorily? The answer is no. Are you under investigation for or been convicted of an events in New Zealand or overseas which may affect whether you meet the teaching council's good character criteria? The answer is no. You need to upload your NBI clearance. It should be valid until six months upon your application. After that is the acknowledgement and statements of consent. So you are going to read all of this. You need to tick all the boxes and read the statements carefully before proceeding to the next page. After reading all the statements, you are going to choose what type are you going to pay. So we have practicing certificate for overseas and teacher registration so you need to choose or you need to select the first one the practicing certificate overseas which will cost you 564 dollars and 37 cents and then click next after that you need to click finish and pay and you are going to type your card number the validity date csc and card holder name you can choose between mastercard or visa and then click pay after paying it will appear that application submission completed and you will also receive an email from the teaching council about the submission completed and all you have to do is wait for the result that's all for today i hope you find this video very helpful and if you want to know more about how to apply as a teacher in new zealand please like this video subscribe the channel and share it with your friends see you next time bye